In the last video, I spoke to you guys about something called weed-induced anhedonia. Anhedonia being a feeling that people often experience once they start getting sober, where you just feel like blah. You just don't get joy out of anything in life. And I talked about being on guard for that sensation to avoid relapse, because that's a very common reason why people relapse, myself included. Now, in today's video, I want to talk about something a little different. If you're anything like me and you've been addicted to nicotine, THC, energy drinks, or adult media content, chances are you've tried quitting before and you've gotten to a point where you started to feel really good about things. Your energy was up, your mental clarity was up, your physical health was up. You had this overwhelming sensation of like euphoria and just feeling good. And boom, you relapse, not because you feel bad, not because you feel depressed, but because you feel good. Now, there's a term for this, and this is called the pink cloud, and that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. For those of you guys that are new to the channel, my name is Dr. Frank. I'm the founder of Addiction Mindset Recovery Coaching Programs, where we help people quit nicotine, THC, energy drinks, and adult media content. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you need help with that stuff. Now, I've experienced this multiple times throughout my addiction journey, whether I was quitting weed or uh, quitting energy drinks, quitting nicotine, porn, doesn't matter. I, I know exactly what this pink cloud phase is. This is very, very similar to what they describe as like the honeymoon phase in a relationship. So say you just got into a new relationship and things are exciting, you're feeling really, really invigorated, right? It's an exciting, exhilarating time in this relationship. But then over time, things kind of level out and heck, maybe even the relationships turns, turns bad. Well, this is what the pink cloud is referring to. This is usually early on in sobriety after you get through those initial withdrawals and that initial state of anhedonia and you start feeling really good. You start feeling like, ah, I can take on the world. I'm feeling at my prime physically. I'm feeling top notch mentally. It's really a high. It's a state of euphoria that people report experiencing. And there's two things that you have to be cautious of when you enter this phase of your recovery journey. And mind you, you may experience this on and off over the first year or so getting sober. Thing number one, chances are if you've been addicted to weed or alcohol or nicotine in the past, that you would use those substances to celebrate feeling good. So maybe this was, you know, you got a job promotion, you got a new relationship, you got a good grade in school. I don't know what it is. You're celebrating something, a birthday, a wedding, I don't care. And chances are you've reached for weed or alcohol or nicotine in the past to celebrate feeling good. So I want you to be on guard for that. Now, a way to be on guard for that is when that addictive voice in your brain says, hey, Frank, you're feeling really good. You should go buy some nicotine because right now you feel like a million bucks. I bet nicotine will make you feel like a billion bucks. What I'll tell myself is, no, that's that addictive voice. And then I will reiterate to myself the reasons why I feel good. Frank, you feel good because you're taking care of your sleep. You feel good because you're exercising. You feel good because you're now engaging in social interaction with people that bring you joy and relationships that bring you joy. You feel good because you like watching the money in your bank account grow because you're not spending it on drugs. You felt bad because of smoking weed alone, isolated in your room, chewing tobacco and watching adult media content. You have to call out that lie that that addictive voice is going to tell you. That's my first caution about the pink cloud syndrome. Now, my second caution or word of advice would be realize this phase isn't going to last forever. You're going to have good days and you're going to have bad days because that's just how life goes. Some days you're going to feel really, really good and some days you're going to feel really bad. And I would encourage you, pay attention lightly to the reasons why you're feeling good. Like, did you get a good night's sleep? Did you eat healthier the day before? On a day you feel bad, did you stay up all night eating junk food? Is that why you feel bad? Were you arguing? Were you super stressed? Um, try and identify what makes a day good, what makes a day bad, 
but realize good days and bad days are going to happen. And sometimes there's no explanation for these things. You just have to roll with it sometimes. That's that's just the way life is. But the problem becomes if you're in this pink cloud phase and you're expecting all your days to go, do feel this way, to feel euphoric and incredible and amazing, you're going to be really, really disappointed when you feel bad eventually again. And if you're anything like me, you're going to say, well, crap, I feel bad again. I might as well go smoke weed. I might as well go drink alcohol. If I'm going to feel bad, I might as well feel bad doing drugs, right? So you, you got to watch out for those two things. Now, my advice to kind of avoiding this uh, pink cloud euphoric phase is just trying your best to recognize when you're not level. Now, I'm a pretty not level guy overall, all right? So I'm guilty of not taking my own advice here. Um, some days I fly pretty high. Some days I fly pretty low. But I do try my best to just be stable. So just kind of not flying too high, not flying too low, just just a stable type personality. That's That's what I aim for. And when I recognize that maybe I'm flying really, really high one day or really, really low one day, I'll kind of notice that. I'll say, Frank, hey, you feel really, really good right now, and that's awesome. You're going to take advantage of that. You're going to film a lot of videos today. You're going to go do a lot of things. But I'll actually tell myself, Frank, you might, you might not feel this way tomorrow. You might not feel this way next week. You might feel a little bit lower, a little more depressed, and that's okay. You're going to rest that week. You're going to take time and take care of yourself that week. You're going to take a break from some things that week. And then I'll remind myself, but don't worry, it's all right. You're going to have another week where you feel great again, where you can go do a bunch of things that you need to get done. So I think just recognizing where you're at throughout your quitting process, throughout your recovery process, whether you're quitting nicotine, weed, alcohol, uh, pornography, pills, just recognizing where you're at or what phase of that journey you're in makes the process so much easier. Because if you're experiencing anhedonia and nothing in life brings you joy anymore after you quit smoking weed and you have no idea that that's even a real thing, that's going to be a problem. If you keep relapsing when you feel really, really good around maybe the two-week mark, the three-month mark, the one-year mark, and you don't know what the pink cloud terminology is, or you don't know that that's even a thing, it's going to make quitting and achieving long-term sobriety and recovery a lot harder. And guys, that's really what we do here at Addiction Mindset Recovery Coaching. There's some links down below in the video description and the pinned comment where you can work with me one-on-one, -on -one. you can work with our group coaching programs, and you can learn about a lot of this stuff to hopefully set you up for some degree of long-term success. So let me know in the comments, guys. Have you ever experienced this pink cloud phase? Do you know what I'm talking about? Does this relate to anyone? And if so, how do you manage it? How do you handle it? What's helped you, you know, kind of stay sober and, and achieve some level of success throughout your quitting journey? I'll see you guys in the comments below.